Welcome everyone to today's session of Office Hours. It is Tuesday, May 5th, uh, 9 a.m. in the Seattle area here. It is a somewhat gray blue sky morning, uh, which is always a nice uh, change of scenery. It's been raining over the weekend, so this is, uh, this is a lovely change. Uh, my name is Jennifer. We've probably met before if you've attended a previous Office Hours. Uh, I am joined today by a special co-host, Roxy, uh, since we are still in work from home mode. Uh, Peter was not able to join today, uh, but we have some great content we're going to be covering for you. Um, because we are in work from home mode still, uh, I do ask for a little patience and grace. You may hear additional noise in the background, uh, so please be patient as we, as we navigate um, the slower connection and some of the additional noise. Um, with that being said, though, I do hope everyone is safe, and if you are still working from home, uh, I hope that your uh, internet connection is better than mine right now. So you've met the team today, um, both myself and, and my furry friend, Roxy. Uh, and yes, that chickpea comment was accurate. Uh, she, for some reason, really does love chickpeas. If anyone else has a dog and has the same um, experience, I'd be really curious to exchange information with you on that. Uh, but yeah, she is a chickpea fan, as am I. Uh, so we have uh, a very... Um, kind of a, a more narrow agenda today than we traditionally have. And part of that is because a lot of the questions that came into us over the weekend were questions about the kind of the fundamentals for AppSheet. And I really want to make sure that uh, the audience before us today understands how to really leverage the basic fundamentals of AppSheet, how to get started quickly so you can build apps quickly and really focus on what matters for you, your company, and uh, your personal experience uh, with this particular product. So a few uh, kind of housekeeping items to note, if you've joined us the past few sessions, we've talked about this a little bit, uh, but the COVID-19 response from AppSheet, we have opened up um, free application development for anyone that is currently developing applications to combat the COVID-19 crisis. There is information that can be found on solutions.appsheet.com backslash AppSheet COVID-19 support guide. Um, you are more than welcome to submit your applications to our sample app directory. We do also have a very engaged uh, AppSheet community that has also uh, been submitting applications. You can find more information here. And for information on the promo code uh, for these types of applications, you would click this button here. And if you have questions about that, please let me know. Um, I'm very active on the community, as most of you know, and I would be happy to follow up with you all. All right. So uh, one other resource, um, because it did sound like so many of you were new to the platform based on questions coming in, um, I wanted to touch on uh, a few getting started pieces for you as well, just kind of quick guides. So if you are new to the platform, the absolute best thing that you can do for yourself is sign up for an account on community.appsheet.com. It is free of charge. There are tens of thousands of AppSheet application developers that use this space, and they all post questions, crowdsource answers for each other. I'm always personally incredibly impressed by the capabilities you all have to take what we think is one way of looking at something and putting a whole new spin on it. Uh, you will really get a diverse um, way of looking at a problem or a solution that you're trying to solve for by engaging with this community. So any how-to questions, any I'm trying to figure out how to do this, this is your best place to start. You'll also find resources such as this learn how to use app sheet um, guide that will connect you out to roughly 10 other resources to help deepen your skill set aside from these office hour sessions. For those um, that are non-English native speakers or those that are looking for additional resources for a different area of the world, whether that's customers that you work with or you yourself would like something additional, um, I am personally starting to crowdsource a lot of what our community has developed for non-native speakers. You'll find a thread here, uh, and again, I'm happy to post this on the thread for today's session in the community as well. Uh, we have, I think, 10 different languages, aside from English, already posted here. Uh, Japanese, I think I saw French the other day, Russian. Um, but the more we have from our community, the better we will be. So please feel free to post your resource here if you would like. 
and we'd be happy to include it in upcoming sessions for you. All right. Perfect. Let's go into the app sheet editor really quickly. So for those that are new or new-ish, actually, we'll, we'll take a step back. Um, so one thing before we dove into the editor, I wanted to touch on, excellent. Okay, it sounds like people can hear me. Um, so one thing I wanted to touch on really quickly is um, we are, our app sheet itself as a platform is not data source. Um, agnostic, you can actually work with AppSheet with a number of data sources. I think that's really important to highlight because we are part of the Google family now. We have not always been part of the Google family, that's uh, new as of January of this year, but there are a number of different resources and data sources that you can connect to your account, excuse me, that you can work with data um, on AppSheet. What's really important to note is that your data source is where your data actually lives. Your data does not live in AppSheet itself. AppSheet's kind of like a layer that sits on top of that data source and works with it uh, to create more of a front-end experience for your end users. That's where that no-code experience comes from. If you have any questions regarding data sources, please let us know. We would be happy to um, help identify or answer any questions that you might have about data sources. Okay. Is there any... Scroll. Okay. All right, great. Um, so a couple questions coming in. I will um, tackle a group of these at the end. I'll try to do some as I go. Um, so in terms of the app sheet editor itself, which is really where you do all of your work when it comes to app sheet or building your apps and app sheet, aside from designing your data, which we'll talk on in a moment, uh, you're going to want to make sure you're logged into your account. Um, so as you can see, I'm in my app sheet account currently, uh, both I, you, kind of a pun intended, I guess, since I'm part of the app sheet team, but that's a bad attempt at a joke. We'll, we'll table that for now. So within my account, you can see that I have a few apps that have been deployed uh, for public consumption. I have a number of prototyped apps, and then I have my co-authored apps. So these co-authored apps are applications that other members of my team have developed and then shared authoring uh, capabilities with me, which we'll touch on in just a little bit. And I have quite a few of those um, because my team is very active, as you can imagine. So what we'll do is we'll start with this. Uh, we'll go to a prototype app and I'll just open something that's available that I've worked on uh, previously. So we are now in the application editor. There's a couple of uh, really important areas to be mindful of. On the left hand side, this is going to be your primary navigation bar and we'll go through each of these in a moment. This search for help box will take you to our support uh, article center where you can look for information like working with expressions, for example, um, looking for ways to find support, things like that. This bubble down here in the bottom left corner, this bubble is a great way to find additional resources in product so you don't actually have to leave and go elsewhere for some of them. And that would include things like um, certain support articles we've listed here, like what is a key, which is really important. Uh, again, a really bad attempt at a joke there. <laughs> uh, bringing AppSheet on board if you're part of a larger organization. And then you can also see, um, I've been testing some of this capability, but you can also see your conversations or your tickets that you've opened with our team if you have that type of plan. On in the center area, you'll see your primary uh, workspace, and this is where you would be working with like your data, for example, or um, viewing error messages, which we'll touch on in a little bit. On your And there are tabs across the top, which are important to be mindful of. Those get lost quite easily. On the right-hand side, you have your emulator space. And then across the top, you have the ability to uh, go back to your account, view what your team is working on, if you have a plan that has that type of capability, go back to a sample app area, which we'll touch on in a little bit, uh, access support, and um, hit save, um, redo and undo, which we'll touch on in a little, little bit as well. Uh, I'm gonna check questions really fast to see if I have anything. Great. App with our picture and setup. Yep. Okay. Great. Perfect. All right. 
So um, let's get started uh, working with this partic particular application, uh, or at least walking through the fundamentals of it. So from an information standpoint, this is where um, if anyone's into design thinking or has a low code or developer or background, excuse me, you'll start to see some pieces in this info area and the data area that may look a little familiar. Um, as it, somebody who's a little bit obsessed with design thinking, I really appreciate the spec area because it allows you to map out how your application is actually flowing. This, as you can tell, is a, a relatively simple application. It's meant to be a basic uh, scheduling uh, of activities for um, student activities, so it's pretty straightforward. There are some really complex ones we can uh, show later that will break that down a little bit more. Our dashboard area, again, is another view of the overall application. Uh, we'll skip properties for now. And then this error tab um, is really important to point out. I think that's something that even really advanced application users tend, or builders, excuse me, tend to forget about. Uh, this error button will give you a complete list if we've tricked um, any type of warnings or um, read error messages or the app looks like it's crashed or it looks like we've broken something, you'll be able to find a complete list of your errors here. And then if you click on go to the problem, it will actually take you to a comprehensive list that explains in greater detail why that error is taking place. This data section is the absolute most important. And uh, we'll take a moment right now to kind of dive into that and all the reasons why. But as I mentioned earlier, your data is really key um, to building your applications because it feeds AppSheet and the way you in which you design your data is how your application ends up being structured. And by uh, what I mean by that is when it comes to your tables and your column breakdowns, and then for more advanced users, your slices, um, this is really where you're able to take a complete viewpoint of how those all function together. So right now we're in the table section of data of our data section within the editor. Um, we can add a new table here if we would like, and here it's asking to add um, the type of data source that we would like to add. Uh, we can also go in and review the current data structure that we have available at this moment in time for this application which is pretty cool. Uh, within this table, you'll see at the top here, view columns, which allows you to view all of the columns within this table. One helpful trick, this might actually look limited, but you can actually scroll and view across, which is really helpful. Certain areas um, that are important to be mindful of, and if there are more questions on this, we can touch about on this in a moment, but this key is really important to be mindful of labels are what are displayed on your app's um, final UI for your end user. Your formulas, for those that are low code um, or developer friendly, um, or excuse me, more advanced developers uh, working with AppSheet, this is where you get into more of the expression-based um, capabilities, and that's going to be kind of the closest thing you have to uh, traditional application development here. Um, I personally am not a developer, but I, I find this formula section to be very, very helpful um, when it comes to really crafting uh, the type of experience that I would like in my application. And then you can get into some of the more nuanced capabilities here, including initial values, display names, descriptions, things like that. But uh, I highly encourage you all to poke around in this. Uh, another thing that's really uh, great about uh, working within this data section is, let me go back to view table, this view source option here will actually take you to the data source itself. So I am actually in my own uh, Google Sheet uh, within my Google Drive. As you can tell, this is a Google-based, um, a Google Sheet-based application data source. But here, I can actually make modifications within this particular application uh, if I'd like. Um, Let's let's try a, a quick little trick. So this application, let's treat it like a sample application, which we'll talk on more in a little bit. But what's important to note for this piece is sap, sample applications are applications that others have created that you've essentially copied and you're working with now. I don't really like the way that this application um, or this data source is structured, or maybe I need an additional column like here, let's say, um, pickup or parent parent for pickup 
let's say something like that. All right, we'll make it bold just for consistency purposes. And then we need to note that this is on the notes tab. And then let's go back into that application. And so right now we're in the activity table. We want to be in the notes table. So we'll expand that. And let's look at our columns. So in our columns, you'll note that we don't see this parent for pickup column. There's activity, date, notes, and follow-up. So let's take a look here. Activity, date, notes, and follow-up. So there's no, um, the, the column we just added to our original data source doesn't actually exist. So what we want to do, this is a really helpful trick, um, especially if you're new to the platform, is this regenerate structure will actually allow us to uh, see that column here. Are you sure? Yes. So not all circumstances uh, will be a great um, reason to add a new column to your original data source. There are times in which it can break the app, um, but for those learning the platform or those newer to the platform with really simple applications uh, or looking just to, to get a feel for how it works, adding an additional column to the back end and regenerating the structure is a great way to go. And as you can see, there's a, a new line item here. There are times where you'll want to add a virtual column and this virtual column will sit on top of your application. It won't feed your data source in the back end. And that's a really, really great way to start. Um, all right, I'm just taking a quick peek at a couple of questions to see if I can tackle any right now. Logos. There's a question here on Okay, I'm sorry. Looking to freezing. Okay. All right. Perfect. So there's a couple of questions I think I'm actually about to answer uh, regarding the color picker. So um, we'll get to UX. Oh. Uh, yeah, let's actually go ahead and bounce to UX. This is a, a good foundational piece. Slices, I'll make a quick mention. These are for slightly more advanced users. Um, I This has been a really popular topic as of late, and the only reason I'm not going to go more depth into this now is because I'm actually planning a future session in the next few weeks dedicated to slices um, because there has been so many questions about it. It will cover slices and user roles. Um, this is a really great way to kind of segment different users and how they interact and view your data in the end application. Um, so I'm gonna save that for a separate time. We can go really in depth in, in the topic. Our previous office hours on, I think the 21st actually covered uh, did a really good job of covering the surface piece of it, um, but I plan on going a little bit deeper. So uh, any slices related questions, go ahead and add them to the session. I'll make sure that they're incorporated when we do our deeper dive uh, in the very near future. All right, so uh, UX, there's a number of questions about logos, color picker, which I'll touch on in a moment, and a few other pieces. So aside from your data, um, we found that one of the most important areas and the areas that we get the most questions about are anything UX related, which is very much anticipated. The way that your application looks is really, really important to how your end user consumes your application. So one thing um, before I dive into the deeper pieces on the UX side is I wanna uh, revisit this emulator because it's going to start to play a really important role uh, in, in what we're about to view. So, Within this emulator, you'll see that there's a mobile option at the top. Next to it is tablet. And then you have an open in tab. So I'm going to click open in tab really quickly. And hopefully, yeah. All right. So my Wi-Fi cooperated. That feels like a win for today. So um, AppSheet is not just a mobile application platform. You can run your applications in a desktop or web-based application. It's not a website. That's an important distinction. It's an application that runs in your browser. And I'll point out where you can find that link in just a moment. Um, but this gives us a chance to view our application that we're working on in real time in desktop format. You don't have to deploy it before you can view it like this. Um, any modifications that you make or any syncing that needs to take place, you'll be able to view in a number of different formats. Um, and here's how you know you're in the app. You can see a few other pieces here. All right, so we're gonna close this web app. We're gonna go back to this and our, see our mobile here. So our mobile is going to be our primary view 
for the time being, simply because we're going to focus on making color updates and things like that. So for right now, these tabs at the top here, views or UX view types, um, if you're an app maker user who's recently migrated to AppSheet, um, these, are, these are the closest things to a module that AppSheet has. It's important to note they're two different platforms, but I find this is one of the more comparable areas. And your view type is how your data is presented. So uh, we'll do a quick breakdown of a few. I think we have roughly 10 different view types right now. But let's talk about uh, primary views and, and rough views for a moment and, and how those function. So uh, this activities, which if you remember, was the tab here within our original data source. So right now it's listed in table view, which is what you see here in the emulator on the right hand side. We could change that to gallery if we'd like, which in real time will change over here. We could change that to detail if we'd like. We could change to map. I don't know that that will work because we don't exactly. We don't have the appropriate data source back here. As you can see, there's no XY coordinates. There's no actual address. So AppSheet is intelligent enough to know that I'm, I'm located here in Seattle, but it, it, there's no other information aside from my, my geolocation where I currently sit. Um, so now you all know exactly where I'm at right now. There's the card view, which is a, a personal favorite of mine. I do really like the card view. We've made a lot of updates to that recently. Onboarding view, which is more for um, kind of an, an opening start page on your application to walk your users through the experience. Form, um, which we can touch on in a little bit. Dashboard, which is not necessarily appropriate for this. Again, you won't find it viewable here because the data doesn't support that. But a dashboard is a combination of a number of other view types um, that you've pieced together. And if we were to take go through the effort of building that, you'd be able to see that here. Chart, again, uh, shouldn't display because, no, again, no data is available. A calendar, which if we had information added, you would be able to see here and uh, the deck view. So let's go back to the original view, the table view. And you can see here a list of all the activities in the coordinating days. We can click in there and find deeper information. We can also, within this application, this is a form view here, uh, make adjustments to the image, adjustments to the time, change the date, any of this. We're gonna cancel that and leave that as is. Um, another important note here is this for this data section, this would be a list of all of the tables from our original data source. So if we were to change it, so let's say we made a quick change to notes, we just wanted a view of notes, we would see all of this. And if we change that to gallery, there's no images associated with the gallery view, so it would be just a list. But let's go back to table and let's change that to activities. All right, I'm just gonna take a quick view of the questions here. A video uh, presentation will be shared at the end of this. You all have a number of really great questions coming in too. I'm going to do my best to answer, um, but just know anything we don't get to here, I'm going to be responding to on the AppSheet community on today's office hour sessions. So just a heads up, if I'm not able to answer your question, I'll be able to get to it there. Uh, okay, so uh, within, right, we've talked about view types. Um, so this is a primary view first of all, and then this reference view or ref view notes is below. And I'm not gonna dive too deeply into ref view. Um, we have some really great documentation on this, and this is something that frankly, we could spend a lot of time discussing, but for now, just know that you have a primary view and a ref view um, to help with your application settings. What I really wanna get to is this brand section here, because a number of you are asking about a feature announcement we made um, last week and we previewed it at our previous office hours. So our primary color is listed as red right now. Um, actually, let's take a step back. So uh, within this brand tab, this is quite possibly one of the most important areas of your application in terms of how it's viewed. So this theme area right here, right now our applications in light view, I could also click this dark button 
and it would change it to a dark uh, dark view. Um, our developers were joking that um, 10 out of 10 developers uh, prefer dark view to light view. Um, I personally am enjoying the light view right now, <laughs> so I'm going to switch it back to the light view. Now, not what I'm going to touch on in just a moment, um, not all of you will have just yet. We're slow releasing it this week. Um, but Color Picker, a few of you have probably heard me mention. And right here where it says primary color, we have a number of different primary colors listed here. Now, I could click this green and it would change this primary button here to green. I could click this orange, it would change it to orange. Or I can click this custom button now. Again, this is brand new. If you haven't seen it yet in your um, account, don't worry, it's coming out soon. Uh, but if I wanna change the custom color, I certainly can. I can also enter a hex color here if I would like. So if your company uses a very specific brand um, or color uh, for your brand and you have your hex color available, go ahead and insert that there. Let's do something a little more cheery. Let's go with a blue of some sort, but let's make it, yeah, that looks a little gray. That looks a little bit like the sky today. Ooh, actually, that was a good one. That note that just popped up. So there, when you're working with your hex colors, we've actually hard coded in a few error messages. Actually, that works really well. Let's pick that color. Um, our our engineers have hard coded in a few messages where, if you were using a certain type of contrast or, or trying to achieve a certain type of contrast with the hex color that you're selecting, uh, you may it may give you a warning that says those two colors actually don't work well together and it will explain why. It's really important uh, in part because one, designing is really tough, it's really hard. And our designers wanted to make sure that they were able to provide some guidance in the design process for a number of reasons. Some of it has to do with accessibility, some of it has to do with just clashing and how it can be a distraction, so they really thought through that. The other piece of it too is that sometimes we try to use colors um, without really thinking about it. Like I'll forget I have a setting in the background and, and it'll be clashing with the color selection that I'm making. You can certainly override that, um, but it will it will prompt you with a few uh, a few different or excuse me it will prompt you with um, with just that note there just in case um, that occurs. All right. So your app logo, and there's been a few questions today about logos. We've put a few default logos in here that you can use uh, for your applications if you'd like. Um, you by no means have to. You can certainly choose custom and you can upload your own image if you would like. Um, from, from your desktop, you can insert a, a link if you would like, but for right now, we're gonna leave this lovely calculator graph. Uh, this launch image, you can get really fun with this. Uh, we're all big fans of, I think it's uh, Giphy uh, for our uses. Uh, I, I'm not gonna put you all through the, <laughs> my process of selecting a GIF for my application, but please do have fun, uh, fun with that section. That's a great way to personalize your app. Uh, if your company actually makes GIFs, that's a great way to add your own personal brand flair to your application. And then this kind of grayish space down here is blank. If we wanted to, we could add a background image that would occupy that space. So again, you have some default ones here. Um, you could certainly upload a custom one if you'd like. You can go black, this darker gray color if we'd like, or lighter, or we can just do none at all. But let's let's give it a little bit of a little bit of something. Go with this guy. All right, perfect. Your header and footer. Um, this is where you can display different names and whatnot uh, for your application. You can adjust the styles if you would like. There we go, let's do, let's, let's, uh, let's bookend it like that, perfect. All right, um, so we'll move on. So format rules is where you can get, again, into some of the more advanced features, and we'll talk about this in a different office hours section, uh, but this you can get really easily um, customizable with how your application functions. Like, for example, if I wanted to change the font color of my notes, or if I, in, or if I wanted to, you know, add this is a suggestion here, but add icon formatting of activity, I certainly could. Um, one of, again, one of the cool things about AppSheet, um, just because I, I think this is a really personally cool feature of the platform or function of the platform, is at the top here, 
based on your data structure and what you're trying to achieve with your application based on choices you've made and the data's design, you can, you'll actually receive smart suggestions from the platform itself in terms of how to work and structure your application, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Uh, it does a lot of the thinking for you. You by no means have to accept these. If you don't want to, you could just click out and it'll disappear. Um, you could certainly add your own format rule if you would like, which is also really excellent. Um, again, we have some great documentation on this. And if you have questions, I'm happy to, to tackle this at a different time, but this is a good way to go about it. One of the questions um, that I get more than anything, and part of the reason why I referenced the uh, resources from earlier, is the ability to localize based on your uh, geographic location. So here is where you would accomplish some of that. There's a, a few different pieces to it. But this particular localized area, you can actually go in and change the name. So I don't know, actually, let's do let's see what's something that's really visible here. Let's do a change about. Um, I am going to be blasphemous, so if you speak Spanish, I apologize. I know about is not donde, but I just want to demonstrate that this can change. It's going to need to sync. Oh, it didn't update. Okay. It did not update. Oh, that failed me. That's what I get for, oh, wait, let's see. About go. Okay, so this, I might not be able to pull this up. That should work. There we go, save. There you go. So that had said about, um, we had to click the formula button. I apologize for missing that step, but you all learned something uh, with me today uh, because I always forget to do that. And then I don't know if you noticed, but this little save button in the top right corner actually highlighted blue. And it's meaning that you had to save to sync your changes and then that updated your application. If I wanna turn it back to about, it's now highlighted again and click save. It syncs updates and now it says about again. So just know that um, your application is not um, destined to forever be in this fixed language. You can certainly change it based on your application's needs. And then uh, also note that the data source itself, you can update uh, the language that you include in there as well. Um, so let me do a quick scan of questions. Ooh, light, dark, which option is better in sunlight? Great question. Um, I think part of it would depend on if you were wearing sunglasses and your font choice. Um, dark option tends to be most popular for those that have to stare at screens for a long period of time. It has a tendency to be a little easier on your eyes. That's just based on uh, scientific suggestion, um, but I think it's, it's really a matter of preference. Um, if your workers are staring at a screen eight hours a day, um, I would say I would recommend going dark, but there's no hard or fast rule um, for that. And again, whether or not they're wearing sunglasses does impact that. Uh, okay. Kevin, yes, thank you for the, the save. And Camilo, um, I appreciate that. All right. Can I let users select darker mode? I don't believe you can at the current time. Uh, I think... Uh, if, you're, if your question is about an individual user selecting light or dark mode, I don't believe you can. I do believe you can, however, set um, a certain type of user. So let's say you're working with an inventory application or a, um, a yeah, let's say, let's say inventory, and you have the individual managers who might be spending more time on a screen going through feedback and whatnot, and you have your frontline workers who are simply entering um, a few pieces of, of critical information in a form setting. I do believe that you can customize that view based on your user type, but let me double check on that for you. I do know that individual users cannot select, but let me double check on the user type to see, because it's a, a really great question. Um, Oh, 
Perfect. So April actually has a good question here. How do I get rid of the sample app and make it a live app? April, I'm actually going to talk about that in just a moment. Um, so hang tight. Uh, we're going to we're going to go through that that quick. Good morning. Okay. So there's a, a couple of questions coming through on licensing models. Um, I'm happy to drop a quick link to a web page that breaks it down a little bit. Um, the best thing to do is reach out to our team, sales at appsheet.com, and they can help answer any questions you might have about licensing or anything like that. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. So we're going to keep working our way through this editor here. Um, there's a couple more questions I'll try to get to in a moment. And April, I'm going to touch on your for just a moment here too. All right. Um, so this behavior tab, I'm not going to dive in too deeply. Um, just know that if you are a low code experienced user, a developer, um, or anyone looking for automation in your application, you're going to want to start poking around in this actions and behavior area. Um, this is where you can automate workflows uh, based on different triggers that you have set. You can generate reports. Um, one of my personal favorites is this offline sync capability. This is something that really differentiates AppSheet from a lot of other um, no-code based application platforms is that you can actually run your application and collect data offline. It just has to sync back to or connect to a Wi-Fi source to sync back to your original data set. Um, it's important to note that if you are, uh, if you do want to run your application offline, you do need to start it from an online capability um, when you first launch it, and then after that, you should be all set. We have great documentation on this. Um, I'm happy to send it to you folks if you're interested in this capability, but just know that you do have the, the ability to operate your applications offline, which is really fantastic. Uh, security, I'm going to kind of do a quick pass on this for right now because again um, when we talk about slices in the future in a future session i'm going to dive a bit more into this just know that um, you do have the capability to require user sign-in if you'd like for added security which we highly recommend for any applications that are made public um, you can certainly uh, go through and authorize based on security filters domain authentication so if your company for example you only want to make this available to individuals within your company's domain, you can certainly do that too. Intelligence, um, you can work with predictive models. Again, I'm not going to touch on this too much today. You really see most of the intelligence in the recommendations, the smart recommendations, excuse me, along the top here, and your behavior, you, your UX and, and whatnot. So I, I would recommend focusing on those um, intelligence capabilities for the time being. Users are how you share your application. So you can either share by email here or you can share by link. And now earlier I had mentioned that we have the um, capability to showcase the applications in web and desktop format. This browser link here is going to take you to the same application. So you can see in a moment. There you are. And so this is what your end user would be seeing. Not really a fan of my design here, so I would probably go back and change this, but this is what your end user would experience in your application um, based on the work that you've done so far. All right, so let's go back to, and then last but not least is this manage tab here. And this has to do with the deployment, um, which is going to be important for making your sample apps uh, publicly available. Discussion on white labeling, so if you want to convert your application and allow it to be consumed through the iTunes or Google Play Store, that's dependent on your plan type. Again, reach out to us for more questions, um, but all of that lives here. Uh, authoring, I mentioned earlier um, about co-authoring. You'll find information regarding that here. And then your version history, which is really important. We've saved this application a few times, which is why it's one point, a bunch of zeros, and ends in a nine. Um, you could certainly request your version history and it would show you everything that you've been working on with here. All right, so to tackle uh, the next piece, which is sample applications. So what I'd actually like to do is go into, let's go into a sample app portfolio. So uh, this is Hayden's sample app portfolio. He's actually one of our product specialists. Um, for those of you who transitioned from app, or in the process, excuse me, of transitioning from AppMaker to AppSheet, 
Um, this may look a little familiar to you. Some of these are the um, templates that were available in AppMaker that we recreated in AppSheet. Some of these are simply uh, fun ones that Hayden decided to do uh, on his own. Let's see if he, he has a great soccer one, which is a fun one to show if I can find it in here. Or excuse me, excuse me, football. I apologize. I'm speaking to a global audience. I, I need to to remember that correctly. Um, okay, I don't see it here, but that's okay. Let's do this. Let's do this utilities project project management application. All right. So by clicking on the icon, you could also click see it in action. I'm able to view. This is a publicly available page. It's part of the app sheet um, domain. This is just a quick little. Uh, do you want to accept this application? Um, or start working with this application, so click accept. The application is syncing. Uh, for some of our sample applications, especially on our larger portfolio on our website, this section down here will have full details in terms of what the data sources are, how this application was built, and it will really be broken down, including spec. Oh, there's a little bit of it here, fantastic. So this is again that map that we showed initially um, in, the, in the editor. So we now have access to view Hayden's application. What we wanna do is actually work with it on our own. Uh, we really like the work that he's done thus far, and we'd like to be able to kind of customize it and, and have it suit our own needs. So what we're going to do is click Copy and Customize. This is going to ask for the application name. Let's say um, Jennifer Updates, just for my own records. All right, perfect. So category, this was utilities project management. Let's see, let's call it project management, copy application. So right now I'm building an app. I'm gonna, I, I could go like refill my coffee if I wanted to. I could go over and pet my dog who's been staring at me for a while. <laughs> but right now I'm building an application and I'm doing absolutely nothing, which is pretty cool. Um, the system right now is copying the original data source and mapping it onto my own Google Drive because I've already authorized it to, and it's restructuring everything that Hayden had already created. It's pulling over the images that he also had available in there as well. Um, and in just a few moments, it should populate. So while that's coming up, whatever you're making it on schedule. Oh, okay, this is a great question while this loads. Um, so if I send my app to a colleague using your activity spreadsheet, for example, would they be making their own schedule or would they be changing your schedule? So um, Chris, thank you for that question. Um, you can do it both ways if you'd like. You can certainly, that individual can do what we're doing here, make a copy of that application and craft their own schedule and feed it back to an original data source if you would like, and there's a few tricks for that. Or you can have a, a master application um, where you each manage your different um, different schedules, if you would like, within it's all based on your data structure, or they can manage yours. Like if, if it's a, a your manager or your employee and you want your employee feeding you information, you can do that as well. It's all based on your data structure. And we have a, a few great sample apps that actually show that for you, if you would like. All right. Um, question on where are images stored? Images are actually stored in your, either in your Google uh, Drive, if you're using Google-based products um, or Google-based data source for this, so it's stored in your Google Drive in its own file, or it's tied to um, a web URL, one of those two places. Uh, just taking a look at one quick question here. Okay, great. So table questions for right now. So now we have copied Hayden sample application. You can see probably my very long name up here where it says utilities project management Jennifer updates. That's how you know that it's my own application. So Hayden's application was fine, but now I own it. And what I would like to do is make a few changes. So one of the first areas this would typically take place would be in data. Um, if I wanted to change the question, for example, um, change the documentation, update localization, here I certainly could. 
uh, and this, I think it's important to note that this is going to be based, this localization here is based on your end user's location. It's not based on where you're currently at. So that's an important note. Um, I could add a virtual column here if I wanted. Um, what I am gonna do just to make sure that this is my own application for right now, um, I'm gonna go into say, oh, actually let's do some brand changes. So he's got it as orange right now. Let's change it to something a little different. Let's do green. Now, as you can tell, this primary color applied to all of these buttons in here and this primary button down here. If I wanted to update this so only certain buttons were changed, I, could, I would go into format rules and that would be how I could make updates to different sections of this application. Uh, but for right now, I'm really happy with how this green looks. Um, I can certainly change the different view types. We could change the name on this if we wanted. The bottom line is this application is my own now. Uh, let's do a quick save. And the way that you know this is that when I go into my account, my apps, excuse me, I can go into prototype apps. And this is my most, they'll be displayed here in terms of your most recent applications, this utilities project management. Again, watch the URL because it's a long name on this app. I now know that it's mine. If it was a shared application or a co-authored application, it would be listed down here. But because it's under this prototype section, that means that it's mine. So in terms of making these applications publicly available, it's part of this depends on your plan type, but the process in which you do it is this. So this application is currently not deployed. And once your application, so we'll take a step back. You can share your application with as many users as you would like. Um, you can share co-authoring with a number of individuals. Uh, certain plan types, you have a limit of 10 before you have to upgrade. I think the freemium, you get up to 10 users if I remember correctly, and then you may have to upgrade. But you can certainly um, feel free to invite as many users as you would like. It's once they're actively using the application that, that um, you would have what's considered an application application user. So um, when you are ready to have this application available for broader consumption within your organization, uh, or you're ready to have a, a traditional sample app portfolio, should you need, you wanna make sure your application is deployed. So we clicked on the, this not deployed button up here that was in red, and our um, editor just ran a deployment check. This deployment check is asking to move the app to a deployed state or to continue editing for the time being. Uh, we have a number, as you can see, of definition. We'll go through the definition, the user interface. There's nothing critical in red that will prohibit this from sending. There's a few warning messages, which if this were my own personal application that I was going to share with the broader world, broader world excuse me, I would certainly uh, want to do a little more digging, like for example, custom icon not assigned. I would want to change that app description. I would want to make sure I specify an industry and, and, and so it's more easily searchable, things like that. But for the time being, uh, I want to move this application to a deployed state. All right, so now this application is in a deployed state. And if I go back into my portfolio, let's do a quick reload. You can now see it here. These are my deployed apps. And these applications are now, um, these applications are now available in a public portfolio and shareable with a broader group. Um, again, it's important to note that I'm under the My Apps section of my own personal account, and I can see them all deployed here. And I can share them as need be. So um, one quick note that you probably saw when we were on Hayden's, let's see if I can find a tab with Hayden. Okay, I can't. All right, so if you are on a sample application of somebody else's, you would see a little note that just says, I uh, click under the hood. On ours, however, since I'm in my own account, there's more I can do. I can delete it, for example, which is something I can't do on his portfolio page. I can make additional copies if I would like. I can share from here and I can preview from here as well, which is all really important information. 
So April, to answer, um, it's been a very long time answering your question. And this is the process in which you go through to make your, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I missed one critical step. Silly me. So there are two parts, deploying your application and then making sure it's publicly available. So I've gone back into the editor's section of my application. Make sure you're on the Manage tab on the bottom left. Go into Author, Teamwork, and then you can click Make this a public sample, and it will change the visibility of your application so that your portfolio will display this application. My apologies, that's very important. I almost, I almost missed that critical step there. All right, so I'm gonna leave that off for now. Um, I think there's a few of these floating around, so I'll leave it there. Um, we have just a few moments left. I'm gonna see if I can dive into a few additional questions. Um, okay, so there's a couple more questions regarding the color picker that we touched on just a few moments ago. Um, again, the color picker has not been completely rolled out to everyone. It is on its way. Um, so do keep an eye out. I anticipate it being open or available to the broader community by the end of the week. Um, we typically roll these out in, in batches so that that should, should be available shortly. Um, let me see. Great. Um, thank you, Nicholas, for answering that question too. Um, let me see if I've got one or two more I can tackle for now. Okay, there's a, a question about pricing for business plans. Again, the best thing to do is uh, email someone at sales at appsheet.com. I'm also happy to make an introduction if you would like. Everyone has different unique needs based on your business. Um, we tend to customize for that, so I'm happy to put you in touch with somebody if you would like, um, but sales at appsheet.com is going to be the, the best way to go about it. Um, all right, so slices. Uh, another question about slices from Ravi. Ravi, I'll post a kind of preliminary slices article on the community thread. Um, I'm not certain if you were on the session earlier, but I am going to hold a special slices specific office hours in the very near future because it has been a very popular topic as of late. Um, so stay tuned for that, but I'll, I'll make sure I get you some information to tide you over in the short time, or short term, excuse me. Okay. Ooh, so a question on reports. Has your team done a deep dive office hours on reports? If so, can you provide a link? Um, so we have reports versus charts. Um, and Craig, I'd be curious to know if you're looking at the broader sense of what a report typically tends to be, or um, if you could expand on that a little more. We have touched a lot on specific types of actually more on the chart side of things, like our snapshot, for example, which is an expression to pull a screenshot of like a map, for example, or a dashboard. Um, we've done a lot of deep dive with that and then different features that have fed into that. Um, so I'd be I'd be happy to touch on that a little bit more, send you a link on that, but report specifically, nothing comes to mind if you're looking at, at that um, kind of niche, niche section, but I, I'm happy to look. Um, let's see, images stored we touched on. I want to migrate from OneDrive to Google Sheets. How does one sign in since one account was created with Microsoft? Um, so that comes down to if your data is still hosted in OneDrive and you want to start using Google Sheets on top of it, you can certainly use both at the same time. There's no limitations to the number of data sources you can feed into AppSheet. Um, it really comes down to you know, plan type and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, if you are want to run parallel, go for it. Um, if you want to use Google Sheets as your data source, you'll need to migrate your information from OneDrive over to Google Sheet. Part of that, again, is because AppSheet does not hold, house your data. Your data lives in your data source. So recommendation would be to migrate to Google Sheets if you're looking to go that route, uh, and then you can still continue to use AppSheet, or you can run parallel at the, both, uh, at the same time and start to um, create new data in your Google Sheets. All right. Snap this reply. All right. 
Okay. I think I have touched on most of kind of the, the quick questions that I can for now. Um, we are coming up on time and I want to be respectful of everyone's time. But those of you that have posted questions asking for resources or a little deeper dive, um, I'm actually going to follow up again, as I mentioned earlier, on our community thread, um, which I'll actually just pull in here so you get a quick view. Hopefully this is visible, there we go. So this is today's uh, session. Um, again, it's just community.appsheet.com and you'll be able to view a number of resources, including today, and I will follow up um, to questions posted here or questions that were asked in the chat box. Um, I'll follow up in this section as well. Uh, a lot of the questions I see coming through are, are um, pretty, are somewhat common, um, and it will provide some great visibility from the rest of our community as well to answer these questions in a way that maybe I might answer one-dimensionally. So um, with that, just make sure I, I touched on everything here. Um, our next session, session is scheduled for two weeks from now. Um, I might actually do the slices one sooner than that, just depending on availability. Um, do register for the next one. I'll put a note out on, again, on the AppSheet community for the license specific one to let you all know for those that are interested in that content. Uh, again, the community is another great place to follow along just for really timely information. That's kind of where I live and um, the best place to find uh, upcoming information and resources, especially for uh, tools like this. All right, so with that, everyone, it is 10 o'clock on the dot. Um, I hope you all stay safe and sound. Uh, I know the world is a little turbulent right now, so please take care of yourselves and your family. Reach out to us if you have any questions or need any assistance at all. I uh, will help where we can and stay safe. We'll talk to you all soon and see you on the community.